What are the best jeans for petites or those of us who are under five foot four and actually have curves? Is it the wide leg? Is it the straight leg? Is it the flare? Is it the boot cut? We're gonna dive into each one of these. I'm going to give some do's and some don'ts and then also give tips on what to pair with each one. Now for reference, I'm five feet tall and I'm currently a curvy size eight. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how these might look on you. So I'm gonna jump into the first one, which might be the most controversial style when it comes to petites, and that is the wide leg. So the style of a wide leg is wider and looser than your traditional straight leg jean, but they do run straight from about the hip all the way down to the foot. These can be great if you're just tired of the skinny jeans and the tight jeans and you just want a little bit more room. These are a good fit for that. Now, if we jump right into some don'ts of a wide leg jean, these probably aren't the ones that you're gonna throw on last minute to run out the door to do groceries to pick up the kids and just throw on sneakers, chunky boots, or a chunky type shoe. It's also not the type of jean that you're probably just gonna throw an oversized sweatshirt on with. If you look in this example that I'm showing, I'm wearing um, kind of an oversized cardigan, but if you notice, it's a drop shoulder. This isn't the jean to pair a drop shoulder top with. So let's switch back to what you do wanna do. You want to pair these with some sort of heel and it does not have to be a high heel. It can be a, a kitten heel, a tiny kitten heel. It can also be a block heel. The shoes that I'm trying these on with, it happens to be a block heel, but it does have a pointed toe. You're gonna wanna look for something with a pointed toe or at least an almond shaped toe but it doesn't have to be a high heel. It can even be a heel like this where it has the almond toe, but it has a much sturdier heel on it. Or you can do a block style sling back heel that gives a little bit more stability. Or you can do something like this, which is just a little bit of a wedge, just something to give you a little bit of height. It does not have to be high. Another thing to look for in a wide leg jean if you're petite is you want to look for a leg opening that's around 22 inches or less. And then also you want to look for a pair that is just going to skim the floor when you have your shoes on. You can pair it with a blouse um, if you're comfortable that you can tuck in. And then you can also just tuck something in and add a third layer like I do in this example. But if you take a look at these side by side, the difference is incredible just by changing your shoe and changing your top, what a big difference that makes. Okay, let's talk about the pair of jeans that I'm wearing in this trial. These jeans are from Judy Blue. They are a wide leg trouser jean. These come in at an 11 inch rise, which is about the highest I can wear comfortably. And they have a 22 inch leg opening. So let me jump back to that inseam of 32 inches. I ended up having to hem these jeans, one, because I purchased the wrong size. I thought I was buying a petite. Turns out they don't come in petite, but this ended up being a good mistake for me. And I'll tell you why. I knew that the rise would work on me. I knew it would probably be okay. And it is, I can wear these comfortably, but by getting them hemmed, they are tailored specifically for me. They hit me exactly where I want to, just skimming the floor. And then the second benefit of having them tailored was because I took several inches off of the bottom of the leg, that actually decreased the leg opening from 22 inches to 21 inches, which gave just a little bit more of a narrower leg than it was at the 22 inches. So this worked in my favor being short that I got them hemmed. So speaking of these measurements, there are two measurements you should know before you go and buy any other jean or trouser. One is your rise. If you don't know your rise, take a tape measure and measure from your crotch to where you like your jeans to hit you on your waist. Now, if you're not sure if you're measuring right, go grab a pair of your favorite jeans that you love and that they fit you the way you like and measure from that crotch seam all the way to the waist of the jean. In my case, I know that an 11 inch rise is the highest I can go. And sometimes that depends on the style. The second measurement you have to know is your inseam. 
seam, which is from your crotch down to your foot. So if you don't know this, you might need to get someone to help you do this, or again, take a pair of your favorite jeans and measure that where that crotch seam is all the way down to the foot. Now, if you're taking jeans or pants to get hemmed or altered, you want to make sure you take the shoes that you're most likely to wear with that type of jean. So just as an example, I have a very short inseam. It's around 24 inches. So if this is a jean I know I'm going to wear heels with, I'm usually going to hem that, that pair of jeans two, three, maybe three and a half inches longer than I would if I was wearing flats. So know these measurements before you shop. Most brands have this information listed for you. If you're shopping in store, go to the sales associate and ask her to take out her measuring tape. If it's not listed online, call them and say, hey, I need to know these measurements before I make this purchase. And then finally, also ask your tailor for a discount. I ended up getting these jeans hemmed for about $10. And I simply told her, look, I'm likely gonna bring a lot of pants to you to hem for me. I'm only five feet tall. I'm gonna need you to do these for $10 instead of $15. It doesn't hurt to ask. And one last note on that. You and I might be exactly five foot tall, but it is highly likely that our torso measurements, our rise, and our inseam are completely different measurements. So what might work on me might be too short or long on you. So know these measurements before you shop. Okay, some options for petite wide leg jeans are Madewell has a petite wide leg jean that is really nice. And then also Democracy, Absolution. They also make the itty bitty boot cut. They have a wide leg jean. Now on their website, they are sold out of all the petite sizes, but I found them on Amazon and all of the sizes were available at least at the time that I'm filming this. So I'll have all these links below and then I will also link the Judy Blue pair that I have on. Word of caution here though, I will leave the link for the Judy Blue jeans from where I bought them, but I want to give you a word of caution. There are a lot of sites claiming that they are selling legit Judy Blue jeans. In fact, they might not be. And I learned that the hard way. I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. But just be careful where you're ordering those Judy Blue jeans from. Before we move on to the next look, I would love it if you'd hit that like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. And I thank you for doing that. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, let's talk about straight leg. So straight leg is the same idea, but they usually are slimmer fitting. You can get a looser straight leg jean, um, but they are gonna be more slim than a wide leg jean. But they also run straight from about the hip down to the foot. These I think are fantastic um, and give you a little bit more options with shoes. You can wear them with sneakers, you can wear them with mules, you can wear them with flats. You can also pair them with booties. The only thing, you need to keep in mind if you're going to pair them with booties is that make sure the shaft of your boot fits very comfortably underneath your jean. You don't want your jean, you know, hugging that boot tight. So make sure there's enough room. That's the only caveat there. Straight leg jeans are also a little more versatile in terms of wearing relaxed fitting tops and maybe not voluminous tops, but they're definitely, you have more options in a straight leg to pair them with different styles of tops. I personally reach for these more in the summer because I tend to like straight leg better with flats. And in the summer, I'm usually wearing flats or flip flops or some kind of sandal. The ones that I'm showing you in the try on, these are from Gap. They are their classic straight leg fit. They have a nine and a half inch rise. The inseam is 27 and a half inches and it has a 14 inch leg opening. So these are really versatile. And if you're not ready to jump to a wide leg, this might be a good place for you to start. Some other great options are NYDJ, Abercrombie, and also Liverpool. And I'll leave links to all of those down below as well, but they all come in petite sizes. The ones that I'm showing from the Gap 
come in short sizes. So the next style might be a little controversial as well, and that is the flare leg. The style of a flare is very slim from the hip down to the knee, and then it flares out. There's multiple different versions of a flare. Some are very exaggerated and some are less exaggerated. You're gonna wanna look for a pair that is not so exaggerated, and I'll give you some details in that. What you're probably not gonna wanna wear with a flare leg is a chunky shoe, a chunky boot, or some sort of chunky sneaker. You're one going to keep it a little bit sleeker, similar to the wide leg jean. So that would be some sort of heel, block heel, something with a pointed or an almond toe is going to look best with these jeans. So what you do want to do, like I said, along with some sort of heel, look for a dark wash. Dark washes are in this style are very, very flattering. You also want to look for something less exaggerated, like I mentioned earlier, something with a leg opening of 22 inches or less. And also similar to the wide leg, you'll want these to just skim the floor with your shoes on. Now, the good thing about this style is, is because they are more voluminous at the very bottom of the leg, you can pair more voluminous tops on top. And you can do this because it creates balance with the style of the jean. So I'm showing you a try on with a sweater that actually does have a drop shoulder. You can definitely get away with that with a flare leg jean. You can wear a more voluminous type top. You can wear a blazer and you can also wear just very relaxed styled sweaters. So there's a lot of versatility in these type of jeans in terms of what you can wear on top. And this is why I think I like this so much. So just look for something less exaggerated on the flare. If this is something you're looking or interested in trying, that's going to help you kind of ease into this style. Now the pair that I'm showing in the try on is from Can Can. This one has a 10 and a half inch rise. It has a 33 inch inseam and the leg opening is 22 inches. And again, much like the wide leg style, I did have these hemmed. I knew the rise would work on me and it did, but by having them hemmed, they are perfect for me. And then also again, by taking off several inches of the leg at the bottom, it created even less volume in that flare. So I really love how these turned out. And I think this is probably one of the most flattering styles. So some petite options and a flare leg is Express has a pair. They have one called their 70s flare jean. And then also NYDJ has the Blake slim flare jean. And that one only has an 18 inch leg opening so that might be a good place to start if you're not sure but you might want to try these and then also gap has a 70s flare jean that has a 21 inch leg opening so those might be a good place to start if this is something you want to give a try okay and then the last one i'm going to talk about is a boot cut personally i think the boot cut is probably the most versatile of all of these jeans yet it has a mix of some element of all of these jeans a boot cut jean is going to be the same it's going to be slim from your hip to your knee but it's going to very very ever so slightly start to flare out below the knee to the ankle but it's usually very very slight but the beauty of them is, is it allows you to wear so many different shoe options with them. These are the jeans that I grab if I'm running out the door, running errands, have to run to the grocery last minute. I pair them with sneakers, I pair them with boots, but then also they can be very easily dressed up with a booty or a heel. They're just really versatile. Same with your shoes, they're also versatile on top in terms of what you can wear with them. So again, you can wear a t-shirt tucked in with a long cardigan. You can wear a relaxed styled sweater. You can throw on a blazer with it. There are just so many options, in my opinion, that you can do with boot cut jeans. Another thing to note, and this might just be me personally, but boot cut jeans end up being the jeans that I rarely have to hem. So I don't know if I just got lucky, but that is one positive to a boot cut jean. The ones that I'm wearing in the try on is from American Eagle. So again, Again, very affordable. The rise on these are nine and three quarters inches. The inseam is 27 inches, which is 
perfect for me because I, I can wear sneakers, I can wear boots, I can wear heels with them. And it has a leg opening of only 15 inches. So it's very friendly to those who are a little hesitant to try a new style. It is not as exaggerated as a flare or a wide leg. Some great boot cut petite options are Abercrombie, American Eagle, Gap has some great ones, Old Navy, NYDJ, um, Liverpool, there are a ton of great options and I'll link all these down below for you. So all of these styles are very subjective and it often ends up being just personal choice and then also just what you feel comfortable in. But I wanted to kind of show a spectrum of how you can wear all of these. So I encourage you to try some of these if you haven't or if you've been on the fence. I think you'll be surprised at how well they can actually look on a shorter curvier frame. If you're looking for style tips for women who are under five foot four, I'll link a few videos below for you to check out next. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next time.